He said, get understanding. And Proverbs said that understanding will keep you. Understanding will train you. And today, again, the Holy Spirit will use the spirit of understanding to teach Jesus' church. The Holy Spirit used different spirits to minister to God's church. It's not this you, my idea of ministering to God's church. I am just a worker for Jesus. He called me and he chose me to be a carrier of his word, to teach his, not teach his people, to allow the Holy Ghost to teach his people through me. And I believe that faith, that wait patiently on the manifestation of the promise, faith that enforce the victory that was won at the cross, faith that fight a good fight of faith, hope that will not faint in the wait, hope that will patiently wait for the manifestation of the promise comes from understanding the power of the word. See, when we understand the power of the word, the faithfulness of the word, waiting on God to manifest the promise will never be a problem. Because we understand that the word of God will not and cannot, it's impossible to return to God void. Right. See, when we understand, it's in Isaiah 55, 11, I think, it's all, I believe, I'm not sure. But when we understand that God's word is just like the rain that comes down from heaven, that it returns not, God said it, it was sent to heaven to water the crop, to make it produce. Yes. He said, so shall my word be. So we understand that God, your word is just like the water that been coming out all the week. And it never returned to heaven. He said that just like my word. My word was set to do work. My word was set to deliver you, to help you, to bless you. And my word will not return until me void. We, and what we think, continue talking the problem. Cause the word not to fulfill his purpose. Without understanding the word of God, you will complain. Without understanding that he who promised brother is faithful. No matter what, no matter what come, he who promised is faithful. When you understand that God is not a God that he should lie, if he made a promise, he will keep his promise. Who can stop him from not keeping his promise? He is God. The Bible said with God, God knows nothing made that was made. He was the beginning of everything. He is a faithful God. And the Bible declared that God's faithfulness reaches into the heaven. So great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. So when we understand that God is faithful to do and perform every promise that he made. He said in his word that all the promises of God are sealed with God. Amen. So be it. Nothing can overturn God's word by God. The word is God. Understanding the power of the word. In Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, God, the word, if is upholding all things by the what? The power. The power of his word. By the power of his word. He's upholding. He's upholding your life, my life, the world. By the power of his word. David said unto God for the time, he said, God, uphold me by the power of your word, God. Sustain me, God. Keep me by the power of his, your word. See? So your word is just like a lamp and a light unto my feet. Your word guide me. If I 
practice would follow your word. It would lead me to a place that I'd never been before. If I just followed your word, it was sent to guide us. David said, though I walk through the valley of problem, I'm just putting it in an understanding for us today. Though I walk through the valley of problem and difficulty, impossible situation, sometimes I can't even see my way out. Sometimes I don't even know when I'm going to ever make it to God. He said, though I walk through all these different problems and situations, but you know what? Minister Thompson, in the midst of all them, I have no fear. You should be fearful. Why? Because I understand that God is with me. That's why. Problem and situation and circumstances cannot fill my heart with fear because I know who is with me and I know who dwells in me. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God dwelling in us. But who shall we fear? The Lord is the light of our life. The Lord is the strength of our life. He said, whom shall we be afraid of? David said, yeah, I'm walking in deep trouble. I'm walking in situations. My back up against the wall. But you guess what? I don't know that it's people don't feel to try to take over me, take over my mind. Why? Because I know who's with me. I understand who's with me. I know what the word said who's with me. He said, when God is with me, and because God is with me, I feel no evil. In the New Testament, can boldly say that God has not given us a what? But a power, but a love, and a sound mind. So when situation comes upon you, you know, fear comes with that. Of course, it always accomplishes problem and situation. But God, people said, to live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God said, I have like given you that spirit. So let that spirit know you are not from God. I do not have have to accept you. You are not from God. God has not given me the spirit to fear, but a power. I have supernatural power. I have awesome power. That's what he's given us. I have a sound mind. I'm not crazy. Just because you left the stove on don't make you crazy. You just left the stove on. See, the enemy always look for any little thing that, that, that put you down. You know that. He loves to make your life miserable. And any time you, every time you open that door, he, he wastes no time coming in to make your life miserable. And that's why God given us the word. He giving us the word, yeah. understanding the word. I understand 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4 and 5, I think. But he says, okay, do I walk in the flesh? I'm fleshly. I do not walk after the flesh. Because your mind will tell you all kind of crazy things. Stop arguing with your mind and use the word of the mind. Understand that the word of God was given for us to speak positive things. To speak to your mind. To speak to the problem. To speak to the situation. He said, yeah, though I'm walking in the flesh. He said, but my warfare is not a fleshly warfare. He, I know what type of warfare I'm in. I'm not blind anymore to fight with flesh and blood. No, that's not the answer. The answer is the spirit that is pushing flesh and blood. He said, though I walk in the flesh, I do not walk after the flesh. Why? Why don't you walk after the flesh? Can't you see it? Yes. He said, no, but that's not the real problem. He said, for the working of my welfare, it's not fleshly, but they are mighty through God. What? Through the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imagination, and every demon, every principality, every problem, every sickness, every disease that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, I have the power to pull it down in the mighty name of Jesus. And bring everything that's not of God into captivity. We have that power. Born with your flesh, forget it. Your flesh will, out, uh, will take you down every time. Because you spend your time explaining to the flesh and the devil. But no, 
God said, speak the word. They speak the word. Start giving the devil the power to continue harassing your mind. He has no power. We taught that a couple weeks ago. He, we make him great. He just was given his name by God, named him, but we made the name great by speaking negative words all the time. He said, I don't like them great anymore. Just remember, when you start complaining, you're making the devil great in your life. Just remember that. Every time you speak negative words about a situation, you are glorifying him. Understanding the word. When you understand the word of God, Satan days of getting power from your tongue is over. Because you understand, you just don't know it now, that death and life are in the power of your tongue. You understand it. We all know it, but we do not understand it. But when we understand that actually death and life are in the power of my tongue, why in the world will I speak death to a situation when it's already dying? Why should I continue killing the situation until it's done and then it worry me all night long? Because I put give that problem power. Because death and life are in the power of the tongue. I really, I could be wrong. Oh, too many people really believe that it's true. Because you know why? We are always speaking death. But we want life. But we speak death. But we want life. Make up your mind what you want. I know you want life, but why are you continue speaking death? Because I believe that we speak defeated negative words with much power than we do positive words. I believe that. That's why they get so strong because you have no problem the negative words that you said are true. You don't know, read and get four steps to how to speak negative words. They just come right out of your innermost being. With power, faith, you, you believe, honest. Tell her, I knew my mind. I, I'm the first one to say yes. I have more faith in negative words than positive words. Why? Because negative words made more sense than positive words. Look not on the thing which are seen, don't make sense. But on the thing which are not seen, don't make sense. No, I need to look at it. Look at it, I see a problem. But God said, that's not a problem. Don't look at that. Look at that answer. Because the word of God has an answer to every problem that exists in the universe. A problem has no reason to exist without an answer. But every problem that comes to us is an answer. In that song they used to say that earth has no problem that heaven cannot bear. Can you remember that? Earth can come up with a problem that heaven has not already solved. Already in the supernatural world. Oh, my God. Unbelief. Hebrew 11 and 1, we went, Hebrew 11 and 3, this is the popular one with us, says that it's one that we read, but the Bible says with all that knowledge, all that reading, get some understanding. You need to understand what you are reading. You need to understand what the Word of God can do. Without an understanding, we just know so much Word. Just know this. You can just grab it off just like that. But how much are we living? What is the Word doing for you? The Word was said to be, to work, to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. The Word would do it. I cannot heal myself. But the Word was said to heal me. The Bible says he sent his word and he what? Healed them and delivered them from all the destruction. I cannot deliver myself from destruction. But I know the word can. I understand that the word can deliver me. I cannot help myself out of no situation. But I understand one thing. I know who can help me out of every situation. I know who can deliver me out of every situation. I know the power of the word can deliver me. Thy word, I understand, David said, Thy word have I had in my house that I might not 
continue to sin against you. That means the word is so powerful, it can stop you from sinning. If you had it in your heart, if you want to stop. The word will not violate your will. But if you will to stop, oh, you shikidiyata. Oh, that open up the door for the Holy Ghost to do a mighty work in you that you will never start to be done. If you are willing, the Bible says you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. Just be willing. Oh, praise God. I'm going to teach myself happy. <laughs> he says, Hebrew 11 and 3 says, you know what they said through? Through, I uh, added, the spirit of faith. So faith is a spirit. Yeah. And again, you cannot see faith, but you sure can see faith work. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can see it work. Woo. You know, that person is standing on faith because I see the results. But I don't wow. see faith, but I see his work. Wow. Yeah. See the action of faith. Wow. Oh, we understand. He said, we, 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 we understand. We really understand that the world were framed by what? It was framed by the word of God. Yes. It is kept by the word of God. So that things which are what? Were not made of things which do appear. Which do appear. Yeah. Read that in Amplified Bible. Verse 3. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. That's what we now see did not come from anything that we that can be seen. Amen. Awesome. The trees they come from another tree. It started from a spirit that we could not see. And that same word is available for us today. The same power, the same God is in the same words. He said, the words, this, it was the word, this shaped what God wanted. The word created what he wanted. God spoke the word into existence. God, word created by the power of the Holy Ghost, created everything that he said. He said, let there be light. The word light had to come into existence because the power of the Holy Ghost, boom, created the light. You didn't see the light. You look at the light, it was created by the word of God. It was no light. We know everything was void upon the face of the yeah. earth, darkness was on everything. And the Bible come and tell me that the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep and of the water. And God said, let there be light. And you know what? That's honestly, the darkness of earth, the depths of earth, everything on earth could not stop God's word from performing. Just like your problem, your situation. Whatever going on in your life cannot stop God's word from reaching you. You stop it, but nothing can stop God's word because earth could not stop God's word from creating a heaven and an earth. So nothing telling me that nothing that can come my way at all can stop God's word from performing in my life. It would have to come from me. I have to speak negative words about the word. But other than that, nothing else can stop the word performing but you. He said, if I can't believe, you don't get what Bubba and Sister Juice believe about the problem that you have, but he said, what do you believe? See, somebody else's belief cannot affect your belief. See, all the time we think, when somebody said, oh, Jesus, don't let me cuss up here. <laughs> Because, you know, a lot of times people get so wrapped up in what somebody else thinks. And they live by what someone else thinks. What someone else thinks, it doesn't matter to the word of God, is what you believe. 
But I didn't ever say sister Jesus and bubba bubba. <laughs> and all I'm agreeing and I'll perform my word. No, he said all things are possible to them that believe. If you believe it, he said I can do it. Do you believe it? I can do the impossible? I can do it. Why? Why do you believe it? I understand how you created the world, God. You didn't need nothing to create something. You made something out of nothing. And your word is so powerful. And all I need you to do is speak your word. And I will be delivered. I will be healed. I will be blessed. That's all I need. I believe. I believe. God, I believe God. But if I have a problem, the man said, God to help my unbelief. Because I need to be delivered. My son needs to be delivered. So if I have any doubts in my heart at all, God, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Just what do you need this? Ask for help. Why? Guess what? I went in his word, I think it's in 40, Psalm 46 and 1, I believe. He said, God is our refuge yeah. wow. and our protection. Yeah. He's a very, a very present help in a time of trouble. So when you get in trouble, yeah. call for help. Yeah. Help me, Lord. Yeah. You promised to be mine. That word declared that you are very present help in a time of trouble. So I have trouble, God, and I know you're going to help me because you are the God that cannot lie. If you made a promise, you will bring it to pass. If you spoke it, you will do it. So help me. So my confidence is I will be helped. Yeah. Why? I'm basing it on what God said. Yeah. The word. I understand the word. Help me help. And in my business, I ain't gonna help me. He didn't say you need to understand how I'm gonna help you. He said, just understand that I will help you in a time of trouble. And just understand another thing in the New Testament church that I will never leave you helpless. He said, He said, I will not leave you helpless. I will come to you again. Then again, he said, because I live, ye shall live also. And he said, at that day, you will know that I'm in the Father, the Father of me, and we are living in you. So you will know that. But do we understand where God dwells in places? Do we stand boldly in what God promised because we know he, God, is in us. We always say he, gonna, he got our back. He ain't going to have your back. He, sister, he got your front, back, side, up, and everything because he's living in us. We are his church. We are Jesus' church. Jesus' protection. Jesus promised his church certain authority and power. We are Jesus' church. We, he built his church. Okay. Said, oh, that was not made the things. Okay. The power of the word. Understanding the power of the word through faith. Understanding the power of the word through faith is the answer to unbelief. You know what? The Spirit, in Ephesians 1 17, I think, when Paul prayed for the church, he said, I prayed that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all glory, be given to you the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of knowledge in revelation and understanding in the things of God. Why? He said, because of the lack of understanding, you just have a lot of knowledge, a lot of revelation. Still living a defeated life with all this knowledge, all this word that you know. But you do not understand the word that you know, that how powerful the word that you know is, that all the word of God shall never, ever return to God void of his power. So that giving us the power and the authority to look at the devil and not just back down and not bellyache over anything, to stand your ground and enforce the victory that God won for us at the cross. Understand what God done at the cross. Well, well, like I said, with sexual authority on fire. You would double dog that and devil try to push you in on anything in your life because you understand what happened at the cross. Do we understand what happened at the cross? When the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us, what happened at that cross? 
We was free. When he said it is finished, Satan lost his power. It was over. The church had the victory. That's why he said in my name. You shall cast out demons, principality, and power. In my name, Jesus said, my church. He given his church his name. Understanding the word of God is greater than knowing the word. Oh, my God. It's the answer to unbelief. I believe that unbelief comes from a lack of understanding. A whole generation wandered around in the wilderness because they did not understand the purpose for God bringing them out of Egypt and allowed them to wander around in Egypt to teach them. He said, I brought you out and I called you to hunger so you would know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. They could not understand why God wouldn't come in and this do this. God said, I brought you out to teach you. And all the time, they did not understand. And the whole generation, the first generation died out because they spent all of their time complaining what was going on because they did not understand the purpose for God bringing them out. He brought them out to teach them. So when they got to the promised land, they, they would be more in tune with their life and not just go wild, I guess. But God said, I brought them out. And I led them the long way around. Sometimes God, you know why you want to lead me a long way around? He know you. <laughs> You know, if I take you the shortcut, you won't be no good about a year. He said, but he said, he said, but if I take you the long way around, you will learn something. And you will become a solid person for me. But if I just take you on to the promised land, you didn't go through absolutely nothing. You will be nothing but remain a baby Christian, always whining and belly and aching and whining about everything. And whining about the weather, whining when it's hot. You see that kind of baby Christian, always whining about the weather, whining about it's hot, whining about it's raining. And when God stopped the rain, you got hot again. That's going to burn up because we need rain. <laughs> That's why we thank God for his this saying, thank God for his mercy and his grace. Because we are a bunch of people that will complain until that mind get renewed to understand that the rain come down for a purpose. If God bends if he wanted to rain, God bends if he make it a hundred degrees, what can you do but complain and on or open the door to that devil? And it all stop there with the weather. It goes on into your home. It goes on to your job. You complain about the light. Complain about the traffic. Complain about this. Complain, complain, complain. Where did it start? It started from you complaining about the weather. What can you do about complaining about it? Isn't that crazy? Think of like all the things that you complain about. Can you change it? Why do you think you complain about it? To get you set up. The devil set you, set you up. <laughs> you know my time is about up. <laughs> my time up. Thank God is up. Hallelujah.